Hi guys, today I'll be taking a look at a Cherry MX Brown clone, the Kale Brown. Let's get started. Now, as mentioned in my Kale Red video, Kale switches come in two different variants which you can learn more about in that video. However, to save you some time, the biggest difference is one variant has an opaque top housing and the other one has a transparent one. Moving on, unlike the Kale Red I looked at, these brown switches say Long Wa on the top housing instead of Kale. This is because Kaiwa Electronics used to be known as Long Wa Electronics, which is why you still see the Long Wa logo in some of their products. And yes, I mentioned this in my other Kale reviews, but it's something I find really interesting to repeat again and again. Now, in terms of pricing, these are currently £4.66 for 10 switches on AliExpress easily putting it against other MX clones such as Gatron, Aotamu, and Greetech Browns. And this is what they look like disassembled. Feel free to pause the video. Now, let's move on to the switch categories. On center key presses aren't too bad. There are inconsistencies between the switches, but I don't think most people will actually be able to notice this. Off-center key presses are a bit scratchy, especially when you press really slowly at the edge of the keycap. Other than that, I don't feel any other glaring issues, but it's still far off from modern Hall effect switches. 5 out of 10. The weighting is light, with an actuation force of 41 grams at 1.9 millimeters and a bottom out force of 60 grams at 4 millimeters of total travel. The tactile event occurs between 0.2 and 1.5 mm, peaking around 51 grams at 0.7 mm. It's not too far off from the Gritek Brown actually. Overall, I like the early tactile event, but the overall weighting is still pretty light for me. 5 out of 10. Sound is again not too bad, it's just as expected. Very average, nothing much to speak about. 5 out of 10. Now for the typing demo, enjoy. Typing performance is okay at best. I mean, it's decently smooth, not terribly weighted, and for the most part, I didn't find myself mistyping words often, which happens when a switch is too scratchy, too light, or too heavy. Also, it doesn't sound like complete poop either. Overall, it's a pretty comfortable switch to type on, and if it was more tactile, it would get a point higher. 6 out of 10. Gaming on these was also very nice. On one hand, it acts like a linear switch during fast and intense gameplay, but for slower paced games, the small tactile bump gives you some assurance when a key has been actuated. Overall, I like the hybrid style of this switch, it definitely does a better job than the MX Brown for sure. However, at the end, I still would have liked the switch to be more tactile. 6 out of 10. In conclusion, if you're looking for a budget, hybrid style switch for both gaming and typing, and you're strictly limited to just one keyboard, consider these. They are an upgrade to the MX Brown, that's for sure. The final score for this switch is 28 out of 50 or 56%, identical to the Greetech Brown, which is a switch that is very comparable to this one. Anyway, next time I'll be reviewing a green switch. Not sure which one yet though. Until then, take care and goodbye.